Bandwidth for all shows on the Aussie Tech Heads network is supplied by Aussie Tech Heads web hosting for a fast, affordable and reliable Australian server with fantastic support. Contact Aussie Tech Heads web hosting at aussietechheads.com.au. Aussie Tech Heads, Australia's best hosting service. again everyone welcome to aussie tech heads episode 444 i'm just looking you may be wondering why i'm looking around i'm looking around because the garage band was playing up but now it seems to have sorted itself out yes i'm looking at you now it's episode 144 it's 2nd of july 2015 state of origin coming up next week on wednesday uh, so uh, let's hope the blues can do it again uh, two in a row. <laughs> yeah. Carolina Blues! Two in a row. All right, we've got a full house here tonight. We're going to whip through them, but uh, we might as well just whip straight through them because Eric's got something exciting he's just found out. But, oh, uh, well, not really, but it's just exciting if you want it to be. He's just blown something, <laughs> and it wasn't his trumpet. So how you going, Eric? I'm very well, gentlemen, ladies. Very well. Will. Very well. Now you found out your little secret there. All right, we'll come back to that. <laughs> Hello, Will. How you doing? Hey, mate. How you doing? Yeah, not too bad. you got your green screen working. Perfecto mundo. By yeah, the look of it. it's, it's actually like about... Uh, wow, it's like eight foot away from me, so it's actually got uh, enough room to do a job properly now. Yeah, right. Good stuff. And also, full house, as I said. Jace Warlock, how you doing? Mate, I'm doing awesome. Yeah. Start my new job on Monday. Woo! Ooh, yes. What new job? I teach this admin, yeah. Yeah, where's this oh, at? Oh, you quit the last one. ABC Photo Signs. Were they happy to see you go? Well, <laughs> so some have that. said so already, yes. <laughs> so but you were always looking for that sysadmin jobs, weren't you? Yeah. This was yeah. just a filler, the one that I had before was doing CSR stuff, which is pretty brain dead stuff, but um, moving on to a lot more technical being going to be in charge of Linux and Microsoft servers. Oh, mate. Can Exchange you think, can AD, you can Active CentOS. Directory. All the systems you can crash. You're going to be on fire. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bring them right down. Well, they're going to lose somebody who was answering 700 phone calls a month, which was double what most people who work there are doing. So That's no good. And they still gave you the night shift. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That'll learn. I work. tried for level three <laughs> position several times. Couldn't get it. They had to... 2.5 position, couldn't get it. So I said, right. I actually, it was funny. It was um, just a week ago around uh, Tuesday, I um, was just looking around Seek and uh, I saw this job. I was like, oh, yeah, no, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll give it a go. I sent in my resume. Half an hour later, they ring up, said, come in for an interview huh. in an hour. <laughs> nice. So I quickly got changed, showered and everything, rushed up there, did the interview. Next day they said, when can you start? Excellent work. Very good. Brilliant. Yes, very good. They, they, Money's right, Warlock? Oh, yeah, it's about one and a half what I'm getting now. Oh, sweet. A well, little more bit than, more than what I was getting at HP. That's like three bucks an hour. Good man. Yeah, know, good right? stuff. <laughs> Excellent work. Right. That's good. It's always, McDonald's. always good to hear a good story. And if you, if you want to get a job, you just get out there and go and get one. Now, if you want to hear a good story, get one. Like, yeah. Warlock, if you want to like hear good stories, <laughs> you've got to go to uh, Old Fart Geeks and, and check out the good stories we have on there. Now, yep. Will, oh, geez, I was going to say, you are really close tonight. I could almost smell your breath. But I've, got, <laughs> I've got so much room to move. I... <laughs> you have, haven't you? Look you at you, mate. You can fit in there. You could fit a few Seriously, in. Seriously, I can't reach the back of this green screen. It's, it's past how far I can you reach. might even get three willies in there. <laughs> All well, right, you don't no, want more than one. Not one. The camera's not wide enough. No. You don't want more than three willies. <laughs> Think of the mess. I think I saw a movie about that once. Too. <laughs> now, uh, Eric, tell me what what has got you so excited here before the show? What's oh, going on? Oh, calm down now. <laughs> you were talking. No. Let, let's set this up. We were talking about Telstra, talking about internet, 
And uh, Eric said, wouldn't it be good? Telstra's got to release a one terabyte plan soon enough. And I said, I can't even use 500 gig. They shot me down in flames going, you're an idiot. You don't use enough. But Eric I has... I Netflix. Well, that's not quite how it went. I just said, you wait till you've got three older kids. And <laughs> yeah. Three or four. So let's not... Uh, you, I'm glad you for your, your, ac- your accuracy astounds me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, photographic memory. <laughs> exactly. That's pinpoint. right. Well done, Sheldon. <laughs> yes. All right. Now, what's happened? So anyway, so we'll go with that. And so I thought, oh, you know, Telstra's got to put one of these out. And sure enough, go on their website, bingo, they do have one for uh, one terabyte a month. And it's the same price as the previous 500 gigabyte plan mm. per month. So that's good. That's yeah, um, pretty good. Mine's I, about uh, 50, 59 What's 99 that? for unlimited. What's that? Who? What? Mine's about fifty nine ninety five unlimited. Yeah, but, you know we don't we we need good, the good quality. Yeah, well, mine's eighty five yeah. unlimited. So. Yeah, well, you know, oh, but you, Warlocks is what you're, <laughs> you. What do you get down? You're you're getting about twenty down, aren't you? Thing. How much? Oh, Fourteen. We watch ten eighty p Netflix. Yeah, that's all right. But uh, but, but tell me, down. Eric, d- down. Does the five hundred gig plan go down? Because that's what I'll be looking at straight yes, after the it's show. Yes, gone down to gone down to one one nine. But was it two hundred gig? It was it was one forty nine. No, it was it was one one three. No, uh, no. Yeah. This is the bundle. This is the bundle, not the standalone. This is the bundle. Right. The, okay. So phone, Presto, the lot. Right. Right. One Presto was one fifty. Yeah. On five gig. Right. Now it's one one nine on five hundred gig for the same thing. You know, unlimited phone calls. Blah blah blah. Uh, and the two hundred gig bundle's gone down to eighty nine. So that's right. pretty good. Right. Right. I, don't, I haven't looked at the standalone yet. I'll have a look at that later. But then as I was looking at that, I saw the new, um, what do they call it? The new Telstra Air yes. situation where you can use your own data at home. On your, you know, If you've got a terabyte uh, on your data plan at home mm-hmm. and um, you've got the right modem. Yes, you need the right you modem. Are, yes, you need the right modem. When you then you put the app on your phone or on your or on your iPad or on your laptop, and so when you're out and about in Australia or overseas, you can log into the compatible uh, carriers that they're using in uh, overseas. It's the FON, FON, and log in. And while you're overseas, you use your data back home rather than use the ro- get stuck with roaming charges or um, excessive SIM card charges from um, other carriers. Mm. So I think that is uh, a bargain. And so I thought, oh, where's my next trip? So I punched that up in there, getting all excited. I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> There's no fonts. No fonts no anywhere. Fonds. Oh, yeah. no. So you just get a European SIM and stuff. They don't charge. They don't do roaming anymore. They've cut out all roaming fees. No, they have. For... That's right. Yeah, that, they do. They actually, um, the European SIMs, they also put in a thing. Uh, was it just last year or maybe the year before that, if you go over your um, your data allocation, just say you don't you're in Italy, but you don't go anywhere else, and you're a prepaid. If you go if you go over your data allocation by you know a squillion megabytes, the most they can charge you is fifty euros, right? Maximum. That's, so you can go over, you know, you can you, your plan might be one gig, or you know what are we what are our plans here about one gig or three gigs or whatever they are. For Telstra, you might go and do 10 gigs, but the most they can charge is 50 euros. Well, you could almost. Well, the funny thing I could... thought about the Telstra ads I see all around the city, everybody has got 1.5 gigs now, but Telstra's like, yeah. oh, yeah, we're going to increase ours to 1.3. We won't <laughs> give you that extra 200 megs because we're Telstra. You can have 1.3. <laughs> all the other yeah. characters, carriers are doing 1.5. It's like, screw well, you, customers. Plan. They love it. Yeah, the, they love the it. Old, the old Telstra is 1.5, but they've grandfathered in, thankfully. But I've got a funny thing. My cable contract might be grandfathered in as well, so mm, I um, they won't bring the price down unless I actually upgrade my bundle. Now, just think if you was in German in uh, Greece, that that extra data that you use there, Eric, you'd be able to draw that out of the bank in a day. That'd be your limit. One, yeah, one you get month. sixty bucks a day, <laughs> sixty euros a day paid for internet yeah. over over usage. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thanks for coming. If you if you can find a bank. Open. Now yes. they're gonna they're gonna turn it all off. You won't be able to take any money out soon. That's why everyone's brought all their money back to Australia. Oh, Our banks just it. went. It's not going to affect them much in Greece positive. because they don't do anything anyway. Well, that's right. Well, that's right. half the reason they got in. <laughs> they got in this situation in the first place. Someone yeah, was so saying that yeah, um, the banks are shut. Everyone's closed. Yeah. So what's so different? 
Eric might know this. Someone had said to me that a lot of the problem with Greece was that they just didn't bother collecting taxes most of the time. Oh, yeah, no, I heard that. Yeah. that. I heard that. I heard that uh, people were going people over People just there. didn't bother and they're like, oh, yeah. we won't bother collecting tax off you. And eventually they just... Well, that's about- one side of the coin. But mm. the, mo- the more serious side of the coin is that in Greece, you're allowed to retire at 55. doesn't mm. matter who you work for, whether you work for a government department or... You know, you, you know, that's who you're working for, Warlock. Next, next job. ABC Photo Signs. Okay, ABC Photo, whatever. Right, you could be working for them, and at 55, you say, right, I'm out of here. I'm going to retire. You haven't saved a cent for your retirement. The government will give you 80 percent of your last, your final average salary. Sounds Doesn't like matter who you work here. for. And that's why at 55, you see everybody sitting in coffee shops, doing nothing. Not working, but they're getting they're on the public payroll. Yeah, imagine that eighty percent of their average salary, that's eighty cents in a dollar. So yeah, if you're on a hundred grand a year, you're on eighty thousand dollars a year from the government. <laughs> then on the other, and then there is the then all these people are trying that the people who are working are paying for this. Mm, if they do, then, if, then, if they want then, to, and then they they're not collecting it, <laughs> and they wonder why they're scratching their heads, going, "I don't understand." <laughs> I don't get it. Eric, you should offer your consultancy to them. <laughs> I've got oh, a few they, ideas they, for you. They look at me like I had three heads. What? <laughs> Work? What? Pay taxes? Are you kidding me? Pay tax? What? What's that debit? I've never heard of a debit. Taxes, paying taxes. I've never heard of a debit. I just get credits. <laughs> and invest it. I don't know where it comes from. I just credits. Just get credits. I think there's a man at the back just pumping them out on his bicycle. I don't know. <laughs> Now, look, if you go back through the face, our uh, Aussie Tech Heads Facebook page this week, you'll find an app that I put up there from Telstra, and it was a pretty good app too. Now, I don't know if it was uh, – uh, yeah, I think it would work uh, across any any network, any home network that you've got. It's a Wi-Fi strength locating beam tractor app thing. Where... I, I had one of those on my Android one when I was on holiday with mum and dad. I was like, where's the damn signal in this house? And just walked mm. around with like that. Yeah, but with Chased this... Um... Cell towers are... But uh, did you see this app, Jace? No, I... no, no. Well, with this one, so yeah, so it, it will record. So you go push now and it'll record the strength of the Wi-Fi signal in that room where you are. You've also It also gives you the ability, you could do a mud map of your house and then mm. you could walk into another room, push the button get your Wi-Fi uh, strength and then tell it which room of the house that was in. So you would get like a heat map of a Wi-Fi signal around your whole house and you can find right. out where you need to put a, a booster or something. It's a really good app. Uh, you from, can do that for 4G as well. Uh, you probably could. I don't know. But go and have a look. It's on the – I posted – well, if you search the App Store for Telstra, you probably find it. But go along and have a look for the, on the – Facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds and it'll be nice and easy to find because it's probably the third post down. But it's all good. Sounds like a self plug to me. Yeah. I What's wish it I was, called? I don't know. <laughs> Telstra or something. Rather. Have a look on the Facebook page. Telstra Tel- Wi Fi Heat Map. Heat Map, is it? Dot com. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Tell <them> the story. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds. Go and check it out. Now, while we look, let's get into some, um, I don't know, some good stuff, eh? Where, where am I? There I am. Now, Foxtel, oh, you know, we all know Hills, Hills Company from the Hills Hoist, apparently a pretty big company. Yeah, the Chinese company. Yeah, they're yeah, huge. Yeah. Oh, they're Chinese now? Yep, have been for a few years. Oh, well, anyway, we're still making satellites, the, the satellite dishes. Foxtel has renewed its agreement for Hills Limited to provide satellite dishes, cables and connectors. So Hills imports the cables and connectors, but the satellite dishes are made in Adelaide. So that's a good story. The existing contract mm, that's lasted... A, that, that's a stretch... <laughs> Why? Were well, you still making them? They're painted there. Hey? <laughs> what? They're painted in Adelaide. They're made, pressed out in China and shipped over and powder coated in Adelaide. Really? Yeah. Well, that You're being cynical, William. I used to work for them, sorry, I know. <laughs> well, all I can say is it sounded like a good story. The existing contract lasted four years. New contract starting uh, yesterday. Uh, we are proud to partner with the world entertainment leader. That's a stretch, I reckon. Uh, yeah, okay. Sure. So, <laughs> so they're um, okay, made in China still. But it's the Good same story. as same as the Hills Hoist and all that. They're all it's all China steel. It's all fabbed in China. There are still some fabrication shops over here that do, like for example, the clotheslines are hot dipped here and things like that. They save weight. They send them over there, but 
90 percent of it's done overseas now okay well well still well, they're employing some australians still, so that's, that's it i mean they still do some work locally so yeah a pity they couldn't do more all right uh well, who else will how about you got a story for us um, yeah, there's, there's a couple I'm looking at at the moment. Um, the one we were talking about before with uh, Telstra, uh, Telstra Air, um, basically lets you, as you said before, let you use their home allowances overseas. The one thing Eric didn't mention was the catch that they sort of have as part of it now. Um, you basically have to, uh, as of next Tuesday, people with, or as of, yeah, next Tuesday, people with the route as well will sign up. Um, but you must create a Wi-Fi hotspot on your own router agreeing to the telcos um, to dictate two megabytes per second from your from your bandwidth. So uh, it doesn't affect your usage, like it doesn't doesn't count towards your usage for the month, but two megabit, they're scraping two meg off the top of your bandwidth to open up your router you for, the, the uh, for the hotspot. But is that, that's so, the, that wouldn't be for each person that connects, that'd just be for overall. That's That's overall. Yeah. So, but if you've got a really dodgy connection, you've only got, I don't know, three meg. If you're Milo, <laughs> then yeah. Well, <laughs> I wonder if Milo's kind of share his connection. If, if, if you if you're Milo, then you'll go outside and use your connection <laughs> and get two meg. <laughs> well, that might be the answer, yeah. Milo. Steal steal <laughs> someone's <laughs> next door. Yeah. Now we we all know Milo is is uh, he's been listening to us for years and he struggles on an ADSL one connection. Uh, and it, oh, what he posted on the Facebook the other day, it took him overnight to download 12 and a half meg, which is ridiculous. So, um, yeah, so maybe my light might work for you. Go outside and see if you can share, join up with Share and see if you can share some other other ones' internet. Or if you're near a payphone with one of those little Wi Fi pink things on it, everything's yes, pink they... these days. Uh, yeah, and see if you can share through there. That might Eric be a good <laughs> Eric, he needs a red hat, a pink hat. Now, yeah, so yeah, so you need a, a special modem. You can't just go and get a, your own modem. I looked up my old Telstra modem, and it's not one of them. You need a special modem that's configured for this air internet. Correct. Yeah. Two hundred and sixteen dollars or nine dollars a month. Yeah. So I reckon there's something wrong with my modem. I mean, it's quite I'm odd. wondering what um, what the lifespan is. I've, I'm still on my original Optus modem that I've had for my, the first Oxus modem that I've had for. What be six or seven years now, so I'm just sort of wondering if, if is it feasible to pay whatever Eric said two dollars a month or whatever it was ten dollars a month to yeah. get a modem? I mean, is that over two uh, years? Or is that yeah, over probably because the... so you might be running Doxus two. Yeah, you need a new yeah, modem. I was just or thinking your old modem might be on Doxus two, which is okay. <laughs> but as the, these modems Threes, get yeah. older and older, they start to break down. The Doxus three modems well, they scream. That's what I thought, but I mean, I'm getting 100 meg, 100 meg, and 2 meg, which is my cap limit anyway. Um, but it's just straight. Like, I'm just wondering what the lifespan is of these things because I heard of other people like the modem we've had at work. Every oh, we've got a Belkin at work, and almost exactly every 12 months it shits itself and it's got to go back under warranty. Um, and my in-laws have a Belkin, and it almost ex- uh, sorry they've got a um, Nitki. And almost every 12 months, it does the same thing. So I'm just wondering, have I just got a freaky modem, or is it normal for them to last? <laughs> Admittedly, I don't know. No, have well, a they, they should last about 24 months to two. The length of your contract, um, basically. Three yeah. years. Yeah. yeah well, My well, billion just did a factory reset yesterday for no reason, and I posted that on Facebook, and a few friends are like, yeah, the ours did as well. Oh. Just in the last week. Happy All the billions days. do the factory reset. Happy, happy days. <laughs> yeah, home, there's no sense. internet. I'm like, what the hell? I was going to abuse TPG, and then I found out there was no settings in the modem. I had to set everything all up again and then join every device in the house back to the Wi-Fi, which is great when you've got, like, TVs and Apple TVs, and you have to go right, 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 oh. D, left, oh, left, nice. left, left. <laughs> yes, excellent. Well, why wouldn't they all pick up again, though? Like, the, are you... They should all pick The up. only thing that remembered the password even was the Roku box. Mm. Everything else was like, uh, there was there was no Wi-Fi, so I forget what it was. Yeah, right. Yeah, ours, ours okay. did that at work. Our billion did that at work at the start of the week. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, Just look, wiped all city. Well, tell hey, you it, must been, it must have been that leap second messed everything up. It might yeah. have been. Could have been. <laughs> the yeah. Millennium bug didn't strike, but the leap second got you. <laughs> <laughs> now talking about MBN, which I don't want to talk about anymore because I don't care about MBN. I'm t- I want to hear more about this HFC business. 
even though it's still ambient. Anyway, it's the same thing. Yeah, I know. But uh, <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I don't sort care. Of. I don't care about true ambient. P it's to fiber to, to the, it's effectively high fiber to the node. That's what it is. Or it's cable to the node. Oh no. Yeah, but look at the diagram. Yes, well, we've got here, um, MBN confirmed it will offer wholesale services over the HS, HFC network in 2016. HFC is what runs the Telstra cable. That's the coaxial Foxtel Telstra cable, which is running straight into my house. So, yes, baby, give it to me. Um, well, the thing is, the only difference between that and the NBN fibre to the node is that they use copper for the last mile. Mm. Yeah. But right. that, that here, is they use negligible. cable for the last mile. Or coax, or co- coax yeah. cable, yeah. yeah. So that's, coax is cable, or you can get thing. you can get Ethernet in the last mile, oh, but that's a bit oh, pricey. Six. Yeah. So here's a little diagram for people who are interested on the video. Now the agreement was announced in December, but it's only just been received final approval from the ACCC after various revisions to Telstra's migration plan. MBN today stated the wholesale MBN service is delivered via HFC uh, on track for a commercial launch in 2016. So that is. Uh, I don't do the the Greeky things, but it's, it's H for Harry, F for Foxtrot, C for Charlie. HFC, the ACCC reminded users that connection to the MBN, MBN is not automatic and they should act early to order an MBN service when it comes time for their region to migrate. I'm ordering tomorrow. <laughs> I'm not missing out. <laughs> now, let's just have a look at this little diagram. Well, we've got I it just here. tried. It's not on there yet. Oh, isn't it? Where? Yes, it is. Oh, you're waiting for it on the stream. Yeah, no, so no, 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 no. On the thing when you say when they they've said you know register now, don't miss out. Oh, okay. I've really, I've tried. No, it's not on there yet. Right, right. So yeah, so that's what as Eric said. Yeah, so you've you've got the you've got the Telstra. It goes into some fibre ring. That's I don't know in the, in the city somewhere, and then it sprouts out through the Telstra cable through the cable, which should be good, which is going to give us some good speeds, Eric. I believe like MBN quality. Similar speeds. Well, I, I'm I'm happy with my download. I just want them to um, tweak the upload, which they which they can do. And if you log yeah. into your um, gateway, you will find that there are many unlocked cha- many locked channels, upload channels that they haven't um, right that they Released. haven't uh, what you call it unlocked unlocked. Yeah. They haven't, haven't yeah whatever yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah I know like two and a half up. It's pretty poor, isn't it? It <laughs> should be. It's two and a, that's terrible. But, yeah. Well, you know, if you're Milo, you'd be you'd be just in heaven. But you would you be. Know, but it is pretty poor. Yeah, yeah. It is when you're trying to do things. I just checked the white the NBN on my place. Work started in your area in June 2013. No, it started at Christmas this year. Um, but apparently, <laughs> that it's coming to my address still. Uh, <laughs> And yet, if you actually look at the map, it says um, it's there. So hey, it's, only, it's two doors down. Yes. Did you check your new? Did you check your new address to see if it was going to be NBN soon or not? Well, it's it's cable. It's cable. I know it's yeah. cable. Yes. Because I drove past here the other day and threw a rock through the window. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Is that how that window got cracked? Yeah, that's it. The, oh. the other owners are still in there, so that's their problem. Oh, hey, I don't think so. But that's another story. <laughs> Well, well <laughs> the window, the crack window came up on the uh, the building report, and I didn't. Oh, say, that, was my, that was my fault. <laughs> and I didn't. Say, yeah, and I didn't say nothing about it. And so I, I guess they're not gonna. If they don't fix it, well, why would you fix it? So anyway, doesn't matter. Only cost six thousand. Now, yeah. um, okay. have you got a price? Have you got a price for the HFC yet? No, I don't think there's nothing out, is there? It's uh, well, it's MBN. No, I've just looked. There's nothing there. There's nothing out. But it'd be MBN prices, isn't it? It's the it's the. No, M- it'll be dearer than that because it's a special service. Why? Why is it special? Why is it, yeah, it's MBN. Because it's the government. Hello. <laughs> no, I guarantee you. you no, know, but it, it yeah, but it's on sold. It's on sold by Telstra. Yeah, I know, but I guarantee you it won't be that easy. You know this. Probably won't be that easy. <laughs> I, hope. I don't care. Shut up. As long as it's, as long as it's not over fifty bucks a month. Now, <laughs> um, uh, Jace, did you bring any stories tonight? You were sort of a late entry yeah. to the panel. You're a late bloomer. Well, I found out something bad about being an Optus. Optus has admitted to handing over its customers' phone numbers to certain third-party websites accessed by the users. Mm-hmm. At first, flagged by a user on Telco Forum Whirlpool, when a user browses to certain website. Optus provides a customer's mobile phone number to the website operator where a commercial relationship exists. 
The practice known as HTTP header enrichment includes a mobile browser's phone number in the HTTP header of the website request. The process aims to streamline direct billing for customers. The Wellspril user discovered the practice after receiving alerts about a subscription to a site they didn't sign up to. Optus confirmed its use of the HTTP header enrichment but said it only provided the details to certain sites involved in a trusted commercial relationship. When consumers browse the internet, information about the device they're using is passed on to website owners in order to optimize websites, he said. Optus uses, adds our customer's mobile number to the information in select circumstances where we have a commercial relationship with the owners of a particular website. Right. Uh, there was a US, I think it was Verizon in the US was doing the same thing and they had an opt-out only option which you had to find somewhere hidden on your account. Mm. But um, it had a great big um, uproar from the customers because you don't want your mobile number being passed out to websites when you're going there because then you're going to get unsolicited calls right, and all yes. sorts of rubbish. Yeah, well, maybe maybe the, they send an email to say if you don't respond, you're in, like Apple does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Maybe Apple owns them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Who knows? Didn't Apple Music start this week? Yes, we can to, talk yeah. about I'm not even going to talk about it because I don't care. You don't like it? Have you tried well, it? I had a look at it. Interface is pretty rubbishy, mm. but um, but no, nah, I'm not into it. Are you into I'm music? Not into, I'm not any into anything that anybody, regardless of who it is, um, I'm not going to be into anything that they're going to start promoting if they're a bit dodgy and chonky about it. I'll stick with Spotify. It does everything I need. It's exactly the same thing. Yeah, most people already got Spotify or Pandora or something. Mm. Well, it's, yeah, well, I've got it's Spotify. A combination of Pandora, Spotify, and uh, iHeartRadio. And yeah. Telstra had free free streaming from Mog if you're on Telstra. That might still be available. Yeah, yeah. I think didn't yeah. JB Fi have one as well? well that's what cares, started. That's what started <laughs> hey? Yeah, that's what started me on, um, cares. <laughs> on Pandora when I got my phone because I got my phone through Pan, through JB last contract. I got twelve months free Pandora. And I was watching the. Yeah. Is it was I watching the Voice? the other night, and they, they had yet another streaming service they were flogging. Um, really? Yes, I've never heard of it. But there was, I'm, thinking, I'm pretty sure it was The Voice, and it was on, a, on an ad, and it was just another streaming service. I thought, what's this? And it was just another music stream. And I went, far out. How big is this market? But yeah, the, uh, there's a lot of um, big music artists are trying to put together their own streaming service, so it's probably one of those like Jay-Z and stuff. Oh, okay. But how would they be getting the, the music? Like, I'll tell you, a disappointment I had through the week uh, is I signed up for the six months free Presto on the T-Box. And uh, so I thought I'd give a few movies a go, you know, because I don't watch movies. I thought oh, there's a heap there that I would probably like, you know, your Batmans and all this sort of stuff. Uh, the, the Transformers and all this. I thought I'd give them a shot. There's nothing there. I could, the, the only thing I could find was Noah. So I watched oh, that. Here we go. I've got pretty good um, actually. But for you, Glenn. Yes. In Australia, Australian owned music streaming service Guvira. Yeah, that's it. Is the exclusive music streaming partner for the new season of Nine Networks The Voice. I've never Australian heard of them. first live <laughs> finalist recordings from The Voice will only be available via the Guvira music streaming platform, allowing fans to listen to their favourite performances for free as soon as the nightly shows have aired. But last year they were doing, or previous years, weren't they flogging them through iTunes? So they, obviously no one bought them. It wasn't yeah, they're hoping it's going to replace iTunes. Yeah, well, obviously. Yeah, I doubt it. Uh, so how do you spell sure. that, uh, Jace, for everyone? G-U-V-E-R-A. Sorry, say again. This is the thing. G-U-V. Who comes up with a name that no one can spell? G-U-V-E-R-A. Yeah. Gov. Gov-era. Yeah, I know. Gov-na. gov yeah, Dumbra. it is. Idiots. You're right, Eric. Globally, Kavira has more than 11 million users and is, is available to over business, 20 markets. That is business 101, common sense. Yeah, if gets... you're going to come up with a product name or a company name, it's got to be easy for people to remember and spell. That's yeah, simple. But it's it like Coke. Plus, things mm. like Spotify and that have got family plans. You can pay a little bit extra and then everybody in your family has access to your music and whatever they want on their device. Well, I'll tell you, the, the best radio 
one I've ever ever heard is the AussieTechRadio.com. I've heard that. Uh, yeah. Tell us about <laughs> Glenn, why don't you tell us about this fantabulous product? Well, seeing that you asked, I will. Now, you can tune into uh, AussieTechRadio.com, obviously through the web page or through a tune-in radio app device or, there's, or through any Shoutcast app that you can put onto your little iPhone or Android thing. Now, you can do that. It's got uh, tech shows 24-7. Uh, back to back, and it's yeah, it's just great. If you're into it, if you're into your tech and you love listening to podcasts uh, from Australia and New Zealand, you want to give Aussie Tech Radio a shot because I'm going to have a listen to it now. It's uh, it's it's getting there, William. It's um, I don't know. I but think old fart gigs and uh, I listen. Uh, I listen. Ian Loft Minecraft one. I listened to you guys today in the old fart geeks. Did I did. One? Yeah. Yes, I did, and I, I had actually uh, I, I posted on the Twitter, but you mustn't have saw it because I forgot to tag you in. But it was, it was. Um, I wanted to know. Did you guys? I'm, I'm, I'm nearly finished. I'm about forty five minutes in. But did you mention the micro B in your computer roundup? Not in that one. I don't believe but we no, have. We talked have about before that previously. in previous because yeah. oh, okay. the micro B was the first computer I ever used, which has got me onto this rocky route of technology in the first place. Yeah, it was one of the first. It wasn't the first I used. I mine was an Apple II. The micro B was at the high school I was at. Uh, until I put the pa- power plug in the wrong way and blew it up. <laughs> <laughs> could you believe you could actually do that though? You put it. I had yeah. you put it in the wrong way and actually blew the machine up. We had. Uh, I'd we say had you about, had a sense um, of one ten volt instead of two forty. We had eight oh, micro beats, and uh, eventually they were connected through a B net network with one big. Uh, micro B server at the end with a couple of floppy disks in it to save your stuff onto. Mm. There was uh, Apple II or two E, I think it might have been, which. Um, after the first, when you're in year seven, you don't get to do computers, but during uh, lunchtime and recess, you could go in there and use them. So I started mucking around with it and taught myself, um, well, I suppose it was Microsoft Basic, which is what most of the things use on the microB, and then um, jumped onto the Apple and taught myself how to use Apple Basic. So when it got to year eight and we could actually do computer studies, you had to share a computer because there was only about eight computers and there was about 16, 17 people in the class. Mm. So everybody was sharing theirs. And I said to the teacher, can I just use the Apple and I'll convert whatever you do in microbe <laughs> basic to Apple basic and I'll have a computer to myself. He's like, yeah, sure, go ahead. Yeah, nice. So I did that. And yeah. then the other one that we had there was an Exidy Sorcerer, which probably nobody has heard of. No. Well, we ended up doing – this is how we – this is the flow of the old fart geek, see? We've got to be careful we don't turn into it. <laughs> but, uh, but look, I remember – It happens so easily. It really does. <laughs> I know. Well, I'll just we'll have, have the on one time. Yes, yes, I'll have to come on. But I remember uh, we sat down in the computer room. I don't know, I think I was in year 10 when all the, the SX 100s or whatever came out. And something was wrong with the computer. And they come out and they said, oh, we've got all new computers for everyone to learn this year. And so anyway, they brought them all out in the yellow boxes and everything. The box was about this big. And I'm going, oh, yeah, what's in there? And that, they were PB 100s. We did computers, languages on the PB 100. And it's just, it was just like a little calculator with probably about a three three line L C D screen. It was pus. <laughs> it was pus. But that was a, a government grant, right? Oh, I don't know what it was, but they I gave you, us a thousand dollars. We bought ten computers with yeah. it. <laughs> but I don't know. You, you must be lucky being at your school, well, like I remember the the micro bees that we had. We had no storage. As soon as the, the lunch bell went, off they went. So did your program. You had to race in the next day, reprogram it all if you want to play a game for two seconds. All right. All right. I've got an update for you yes. on the H- HFC rollout. Ooh, this was yeah. announced in Computer World magazine in May this year. Uh, blah, 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 blah. It will roll out the DOCSIS 3.1 standard, which is now on DOCSIS 3. Right. And this standard... Support speeds of up to 10 gigabits down mm-hmm. and 1 gigabit up. Now, yeah, that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. That's yeah, what we're talking about. Using existing <laughs> cable networks. Yeah. Well, we don't need fibre to the, the node when we got that this sort is of what, stuff. This is what Mal... Oh, Eric's gone. Has everyone gone? Hang on. Hang on. Whoa. No, we're, here. we're here. Hang on. Eric. Yeah. Eric. He, Hello. Did, he did that last week, so he just went Eric, away. Eric, you've gone crazy. You've gone soft. <laughs> he's going on, he's ranting. He can't hear us either. <laughs> he's ranting. Mm. <laughs> we can't hear you, Eric. <laughs> can't oh, hear dear. you. 
I can hear everyone else. Um, Unplug and replug your three, USB. I think you, I think you had to um, restart Skype last week. Remember if I remember right. correctly. Okay. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to do that. I'll, I'll, I'll re-bring everyone. Can you back hear me? In. Oh, there oh, he is. There what happened? Go. No, we can't hear you. Sorry, mm-hmm. Eric. What happened? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what happened. It sounded then. like you're going into something very interesting, and then it went quiet. Yeah. I blame Glenn. <laughs> so, yeah, you muted me. You didn't want yeah. me to talk. You shut me out. Oh, I you did. did a, you did a Q and A on me. You shut me down. <laughs> oh, I, I did want to hear you talk because it was interesting. We don't want any terrorists on here. Thanks. <laughs> so now, sorry. So just bro, this show's flagged forever on the no fly list now. So, so just, just to, if you can remember what you were talking about, uh, we were I doing to, ten down, that one up. This is, yes, it was yeah, uh, one gig down, or ten gig down, up to ten gig down. Obviously, they'll throttle it, yeah, because otherwise they can't. They can see, oh, you know, we'll give you one gig. If you want two gig, you pay extra, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. that's fine. If I, someone gives me one gig down instead of ten, really. Is it going to make that much of a difference? Yeah, like you're going to notice the difference. Yeah, yeah that's right. well, you might if you're a geek. Yeah, but look, for that everyday use, you just you just know that your movie comes down in thirty seconds yeah. instead of um, instead of two minutes. If a you, week you know, for Milo. Yeah, oh, if you were in the US, you'd notice a, a, a difference. I, I would think, but being yes. in Australia, you're you, used to it. That's well, right. You, well, you're still throttled by going overseas. So, mm. but that one out. But anyway, and that's what Malcolm Turnbull's been saying all along. That's why he's cut the. The build of the of the um, of the NBN Fiber. in half, mm. because why would you rip out perfectly good cable that can do exactly what you're replacing it with? Why would you rip it out? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, so the, you don't need to rip out the cable, but they're saying the copper is going to be fine and no, well, well the copper, well, which is you know, good. some copper is, good, is some completely copper needs to be dead. Up. I understand that, but the cable cable doesn't. Well, look, we've been yeah. getting cable TV for. You know, they've been putting 1080p down on a, on a Foxtel HD, 1080p down there, no problem. We're getting instant on cable, there's no buffering, right? Because they're feeding that at probably two or three gigs a second. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. down that cable. So they've tweaked that line, and now they're going to tweak the internet lines. I don't mm. understand why you would spend $20 billion ripping it up and replacing it. Well, not at this stage, I don't think. I think if you're gonna look, well, that's it, no, that's what Ruddy and, and Conroy were gonna do. I oh, just rip it out of the ground. No idea because it's not mm. their money, see. But maybe, well, maybe they. Oh, you don't. Know, it's a very complicated issue. Maybe they've had issues with the the existing infrastructure and you know how to get around who owns what and whatever. I don't know, but no. yeah, but it, it came like, down to cost. I'm, I'm it happy. All came down to cost and the technology available. Look, mm. if it wasn't possible, Mixed he wouldn't have done it. A bad idea. He would have said, "Well, I can't do it." We're going to go ahead doing this method or that method. Mm. But it's obviously possible. And you, uh, at the same time, you, you save $20 billion. Yeah, look, I don't, look I'm no internet cable scientist, but I, I probably agree that, that with the you, copper is outdated. You've got to get rid of the copper. Um, but the coax, well, we'll wait and see. No. I'll well, wait and these, see for that one. These speeds that they're getting in the, in the States, they're all on copper. They're all on uh, cable. Yeah, but they don't. The many, many, uh, only a few cities have got fibre optic, and they're mainly the ones that Google are building. Mm. But I think, um, but I think, Jace, I think uh, they have tested copper, haven't they, with high, higher speeds, and it's been okay. But I yeah, think it's yeah. still... That's, that's if you've got good copper that's yeah. not falling to bits with crappy well, solder. Yeah. I reckon copper that's more than, more than probably 30 years old should be replaced. That's not even. That's after, five, 10, that's five after 10, it starts oxidising. Yeah, well, copper also doesn't. Haven't they got problems? As soon as it rains, the pits flood and copper. Yeah. Now, there's a, there's a story through the week that Jace probably knows a bit about because I saw it on his Facebook feed. But um, one eight hundred numbers. Did you have that one this week, Jace, or do you want me to? Yep, so I did. You can go for it. Oh no, you're right. You can. Tell I don't us. have the story. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. One eight hundred numbers can be dialed from mobile phones for free. Boom. Well, That's I right. always thought How they. I'd never realised they weren't. To be honest. No. No. Not all one three numbers. They were all chargeable. No. But from one well, three hundred uh, numbers, I thought they were they were um, they were called it like local call rates. But yeah, I didn't realise one eight hundred numbers were. So not. from now, the one eight hundred are now free of cost on Optus, Telstra, Vodafone mobile networks. So there's be and there's a warning that goes along with it. A small number of independent mobile telcos have yet made one eight hundred calls free, with lobbying continue to bring all providers into line. So that's a good. So that's very good. So if you're on Optus, Telstra, or Vodafone, one eight hundred, ring your Centrelink up for free. 
Yeah. yeah. And you sit on yeah, hold for four hours. And go to the bathroom. <laughs> it's, it's interesting with um, with one three hundred numbers and one eight hundred numbers and stuff. Now, I'm through a company, um, Telco Works, they're called, and they use um, VoIP to do really cheap, like one three hundred and one eight hundred. I I pay five dollars a month for a one three hundred number mm. to divert to my mobile. Yeah. Um, you know, it's all through VoIP. So yes, there's a little bit of a delay and the quality is not great. But compared to going through Telstra, for example, you know, where it's where you can literally spend thousands of dollars on a number. Yeah. Um, it's good. It's, the market's yeah definitely a lot more open than it used to be in that respect. Mm. All right. I think uh, Eric had a story this week. Did you bring a story to us? I brought a couple of stories to you. Oh, excellent. This week. Now, first one. First one. That's not it. That's not it. That's your story. Oh, you have got a couple of stories. Mouse sounds good, though. It's a bit... Yeah, quality mouse. Is that mine or yours? No, might be mine. mine. Oh, dear, Glenn. Wow. What, what you, what you, have you got a, like a person sort of bicycling <laughs> yeah, in the background? Yeah, I reckon. There? It's, it's a, a Microsoft funny. mouse. Oh, oh, oh was, there's your problem. Oh, oh was, there's your problem right there. I was hammering it, though. I was crying. This is the best mouse well, this, I've this ever is a Microsoft had. Mouse. Microsoft right. wheel What's mouse. I can't buy another one. I would if I could. Yeah, why can't you buy another one? Can't find them anywhere online then. Yeah, yeah, they're everywhere. You get them from Microsoft Direct. Go no, no, to this Microsoft, Microsoft, Microsoft wheel store. mouse with the blue laser. Yeah. Oh, I've fits got a red in, laser. Yeah, it fits a, a big laser. hand like that. It's not the thin one. Oh, it's, it's really don't flatter thing. yourself. i got Very one soft. of those old-fashioned mice that, so, you know, it has a tail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, on, I'm Logitech. No, that's I'm called a rat. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I used, I used, um, I used Microsoft mice for years, and I went onto these Rush, which are just a... They're a fire glide. They're a gaming mouse, so they've got a few buttons on them. But the feel of this thing, like the tactile response, is amazing compared to. Yeah, I just don't want one that's thin like this. I want a big fat. Yeah. Mouse. No, that's why he I like this one. Big and this fat. He likes him big that's and what, fat. Everyone. That's what this one is. This I one's like really big fat. Mice and I cannot lie. <laughs> but it's also right, a big back buttons. Back to my story. Jeez, the big people. buttons what for story? big too. We're ADHD. having fun. This the ADHD show, story. everyone. <laughs> is anyway. Right. Ooh, shiny. Now, if you upgrade your phone today, if anyone upgrades their um, their uh, what you call it, their iPhone today, because the update came out today, oh, I don't know if you know. Oh, that. Don't, the Android. don't. I did this morning. Did you? Okay. Well, I don't know if anyone knew this, but on iTunes, you can share. If you put, if you click sharing, you can share your music, so that anyone else opens iTunes in your house, they can play your music, right? Right. Well, apparently, this neat. It's, oh, this is the head I. Apple's iOS 8.4 kneecaps home sharing. Uh-huh. Now you can only play it from your Apple TV. What a crock of crocks. Wow. You know, one of the funny things about that was was because you could share it out onto the network. When people went to hotels, you could view each other's music and yeah. listen to other guys' music in the same hotel. But <laughs> see, there's a way thing. around it. There is a way around it. Yeah. Um, because, see, if you've got the app, you know, Glenn, you've got, I think, a couple of these at your place. The the um, the wireless, the, the Apple wireless, what do you call them? Airport. Airport, yep. Airport Express. Yep. They've got little speaker plugs at the yes. end of them. Right, so if you place those around your house mm-hmm. and you put a speaker in there, you can play the music direct to that. Right. But why would they, why, the, so, although I couldn't get, as I said last week, home sharing you just was can't, a piece You can't of access pus. the sharing. I can't open my iTunes in this room. For example, if the the it's it's the the music's in another computer, well, that's I, can't, ridiculous. I can't see it. That's I can't ridiculous. see it. Why they do yeah, that? Yeah, stupid. Why they do? I think that? some people are going to complain. Yes, because well, look, it's all password protected. This is the thing. And if you didn't password protect your your home sharing, well, you're an idiot. You deserve to. Your so stuff what they're doing? Stuff. What they're doing is they go and listen. What what's one of the easiest ways to get people to pay for our music system? Let's just screw everyone over, stop the home sharing, and then they'll yeah. have to. Then you know they'll have to pay. Everyone for... goes to Spotify. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look, exactly. I think Apple are getting a bit, bit bloody. They're scungy. getting a bit cheeky. They're getting yeah. a bit scungy. Yeah. But look, that might be. I think um, Timmy, little Timmy, is going getting a bit. It's going a little bit. Timmy, to his head. Oh, Timmy. Yeah. I think. He's I think just it's going, going a bit crazy because Jobsy yeah. would have never have done this. Well, you wouldn't think so. Like I think you. Gotta... No, no, Jobs. Steve Jobs was all about give it to everyone. Yeah. You know, if you're on our on our um, what you call it, on Network. our ecosystem, yeah, go for your life. Yeah, well, it's so a you wonder. You buy the Apple operating system and install it on like three computers, and that's right, exactly. Yeah. Well, What's next? He's going to charge. You know, he's going to go the Microsoft way and charge three hundred bucks for every computer with Windows or with 
you know. iOS. Oh, iOS. iOS X. Yeah, I know. Look, it's just a bit scungy. What's happening so, to... So I upgraded and it's too late. What's happened to Music Match? Isn't that where you store your music in well, the that's cloud? that's still there. That's still there. You can still do that. Well, that'll be the next to go. Oh, yeah, that'll be... Oh, oh. no, they'll just have the price. That's no, they'll get rid of that altogether. You reckon? Oh, they're scunge buckets. <laughs> they're <a> scunge there. <laughs> There you go. There's Gunji. Right, next next story. Yes. Johnny Ive. So Johnny Ive officially takes Chief Design Officer title at Apple. Now scroll down to the picture and he looks pleased about it. <laughs> yeah, I can't it's show the only the... one not smiling, right? <laughs> yeah. I can't show the picture on the st- on the stream, I'm sorry. Oh Will I don't know if Will's got access to your notes, but oh I can do it. I can share it. That's right, I got it. No, it'll take over everything. It? it won't work. No one. Yeah, Will's there got it. Is. Don't, Eric. Don't. Yours might work. Okay, no, you, you do it, Will. There he goes. No, that right. is not a... <laughs> He's not happy about it, is he? It's fine. Jeez. I don't know. That, that, that's his happy face. Oh, right. <laughs> you should see him when he's really pissed off. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 he, that's see that face you got out there? He just won lotto. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> this is his really. Um, this is his upset. And that's I'm that off one. Face. His wife just left him. <laughs> he, he took the music service, streaming service, and turned it on and its head with our innovative he's, products. He's thinking. He's thinking Eric Abetz right there. <laughs> yeah, he's that's poking. What... He's, he's poking his fruit right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lost Eric now. He won. He won Lotto, and he's just going. What? Only ten million. <clears throat> Would you really yeah, that in a day? This is his don't poke my fruit face. <laughs> no, that's someone just poked my fruit. <laughs> Do you yeah, that one there is just, who's behind me? Eddie Q, get out of there. Tim Cook. <laughs> now, <laughs> oh, now, I forget what I was going to say now. Why has oh, he got a giant penis in his head? What the hell is that? Oh, now, oh William. That's a pencil. Do you reckon that these people, if, uh, how much money would you have to be on before you, uh, when, and before you stop buying lotto tickets, do you so, reckon? Oh, uh, look, I know what these guys are on. You know Scott Forstall? I don't know if anyone remembers him. You know the guy with the big eyes <laughs> on, on these presentations? He, he, got, he got fired a couple of years ago. And when he left, um, he cashed in $240 million worth of shares. Yeah, that's a fair bit, isn't and it? and Johnny Ives was about a squillion levels above him. Because yeah. he, so he looks Ives, much Ives more intelligent. Ives, Ives, Johnny Ives would be worth about a billion dollars now. That's a hell of a lot of money. That's a lot of money. I mean, this this guy's clearly smarter. Just look at it. <laughs> that's him. That's, <laughs> that's when he worked out he had two hundred and forty million. He went, oh, what? <laughs> I think his face exploded or something. <laughs> I want to be like the Terminator. Not, not one part. Not one part of that face is looking in the same spot. No, his eyes are all googly. No, they're all wonky. Yeah. Maybe that's why they got rid of him. Yeah. Mate, listen, mate, we can't have you someone looking into the crowd, but also at the exit at the same time. <laughs> that's right. It's just not, it's unnerving. People don't like it. That's right. Are you looking at me? Or are you looking at him? looking at me. You're looking at him. Kind of his best Kramer impersonation there. <laughs> all right. Chase, have you got anything else? <coughs> yeah. Please. Um... <laughs> Not Please, a lot of information, <laughs> but the microwave has just been given a reboot after more than five decades with a U.S. manufacturer claiming it has fine-tuned the kitchen staple. The reinvented appliance, which is still in the testing stages, has been revamped by Freescale Semiconductor. The makeover includes pro- improvements to heating spot, capabilities man. to stop food from drying out, being overcooked, reducing moisture and saving energy using a solid radio frequency. The revamp will allow the microwave to brown food, poach it, and even bake. Mm. Sounds interesting. Yeah, nice. A microwave. But I had a convection I was microwave. Say, they call a convection microwave. <laughs> yeah, when I was uh, younger. Yeah, they were all right. Convection. My last yeah, one. Was, yeah. Yeah. There are nine can, years. Can you buy a not convection microwave anymore? Yes. No, yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah, you can. The ninety nine dollar ones. Yeah, it may be the really, really cheap ones. Oh, yeah, cheap. I thought they were the norm. It's been that no, long. Convection ones uh, are now. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. That long since I bought one. Now, look, here's an unfortunate story. From Google, uh, very unfortunate uh, because it, uh, not that it's probably landed in too much trouble because it was a uh, artificial. And even if it did, they couldn't care less. Let's face it. But anyway, you know that Google's got their new photo app thing. You know, you load your all your photos up into the Google Drive, and then it'll go through or face recognize everyone, and then it'll recognize animals and recognize this and that and all Thank this you. sort of. Uh, sorry. 
and monkeys. Yeah, and, and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> gorillas. Now, what has happened? Oh, uh, yeah, I saw that. I wonder what that was about. Now, what had happened is uh, there's a, some people uploaded some pictures of themselves, some um, uh, original Americans, whatever you want to call them. What do you African call them? American. African American, black people. And uh, yeah, and anyway. And they're African. And then yeah. let's set it up. There's six pictures here, and it's recognized skyscrapers, aeroplane wing or aeroplanes, cars, bikes, and the gra- someone in a graduation photo with a graduation gown and hat on or cap. And mm. then it's, uh, it's the sixth photo. It's recognized as what, Glenn? It's, it's an African American, which is really bad. And the, ta- and the Google has tagged it as gorillas. So, yeah, that's, so that's, that's, that's not good. That is very unfortunate. <laughs> Uh, for Google, because obviously, look now, look, it's been been going a bit crazy, you know. Google's... What if I put if I put Bill Shorten's picture up there? Would it come up with scumbag? <laughs> you never know. You could try. I might try it. <laughs> I'm sure people would like to do that to a lot of uh, pollies. See what happens. But anyway, look, um, the error was brought the attention uh, to Google. Google was later criticised on social media because of. And, and labelled racist, but like really, it's, it was a, it's, it's an, an error. Algorithm. It's an error. Go through the algorithm. Yeah, this, and but Google has come out and said this is not one hundred percent okay. Uh, it was it was on this guy's high list of bugs that you never want to see happen. Who was this? This was uh, Jackie L sign by a tweet. Jackie J A C K Y. Don't know if that is uh, a lady or a man, but oh no, no, no but anyway, hey. Mister Zunger. Said Google had already taken steps to avoid other others experiencing a similar mistake. This is not the first time Google Photos has misspelled one species, mislabeled one species as another. So, but you know, that's just what happens. the The news site iTech Post noted that the app was tagging pictures as dogs, as horses in May. Uh, users are able to remove badly identified photos within the app, so you just remove it so, and go again. But, uh, but look, that's unfortunate. I don't think the, the people involved were too cranky, but that's just what happens. Like, you, know, you, you upload a picture of yourself and it comes up as a snowman. Who cares? I don't care. All that's right. right. You, you come up, you as an albino, Glenn. Probably would, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a gay albino. I don't know. <laughs> now, now, not uh, in Australia, thanks. No, not here yet. Of that sort of thing here, thanks. Now, uh, Will, your turn. Yeah, the um, we were talking before actually. I think last week we mentioned that um, I finally got a reason to buy Netflix, and that's because Top Gear is going to it. Just on a side note, I actually watched the final episode of Top Gear. Um, yeah, I did that they, too. They they back to back the two last episodes. They basically had, I mean, the actual Top Gear part of it where they had the challenges was good, but the fill in bit was basically Hammond and May in an empty studio. In an empty studio with no studio audience, no props, no nothing, they're basically like, hi, oh, we're here terrible. to introduce this last episode. I hope you liked it as much as we do. See you oh. next time. That well, was you, pretty can much... were, you can tell they were pretty sad about the whole thing. <laughs> you can tell they were given $9 million just to do that. Like, it was, yeah. it was yeah, horrible. But you could see that they were sad about the whole thing, and, and it just they weren't, the enthusiasm wasn't there as a result. Hmm. Yeah, I watched but, a repeat um, of one the other day. It was the one where they had the the hover van. I don't know if you oh, remember. Yeah. That was on go. It was good. <laughs> um, um, yes, but we're talking we're talking the other week about uh, piracy and how uh, what was it the Dallas Buyers Club were chasing people who, you know, they had twenty eight days to respond, and if they didn't, then Voltage would send a lawyer after them. And now apparently that's a PR disaster, and they didn't really mean it. It was just something they had to say. Um, but the Australian government on Monday um, passed a new site blocking law. Um, it's the we we're talking about the internet filter before, but this is sort of um, this one's different now. What it basically allows to do is any content creator can have any works taken down for any reason without proof. So basically, if I wanted to, I could put a content claim against every video on YouTube and they would be required to not show them in this country. Yeah, but they wouldn't take that seriously. You, you'd get the, uh, your, your first one million takedowns and they go, oh, there's something fishy going on here with this Mr. Tompkinson. Well, we need some proof. The way, that, the, way the, law is, the way the law has now been written is that I can say take this down and they have to do it. That's their own wording. 
I could I could put a complaint against the government website, against the federal government website, and they would have to take it down. Yeah, right. Well. And then that they would have to approve it after they'd have to go through it and figure it out after the take. But the, the way it's worded now is that they take it down, and then they figure out if they should have done it or not. Hmm. Well, that's just crazy. What's wrong with the way it goes? That's how it is. I'm happy with how it's going. Maybe YouTube's a bit over the top. But, <clears throat> but, yeah, just a bit. <laughs> but, uh, look, have, have you ever heard of a guy called Matty McConnon? McConnon, hey? No, <laughs> Matty McConnon. This bloke. Well, not anymore. No. The, poor, the poor bloke. He died. He was only 63. But he was the, the father of the SMS. So oh, was he, he? Yeah, he helped launch the worldwide sensation of texting. Uh, he became known as the father of SMS after be- developing the idea of sending messages via mobile networks. Now, Jarmo Matilinian, who is the managing director of Finnish telecoms group <coughs> Finnet Association, described McConnon as a grand old man of the mobile industry. Who describes people as a grand old man? They did. Eric, when you go, I'll say he was a grand old man. <laughs> He's a grand young man, too, at one point. Yeah, well, he six, had yes. 10,000 men. He <laughs> marched them up to the top of the hill. He <laughs> <marched> <laughs> them, <laughs> it was very sad. He was just going to retire and should have had many years ahead, uh, this, this Matinanen said, who added that the Makinanen's fascination with communication technology had been irrepressible. So, yeah, that, that's no good. The father of the SMS, gone. What did he die of? Well, no one said. I, I looked, Radiation poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> I, I looked at a few sites to find that out, uh, but no, it was a, it was a one site just said it was a short illness. There was a, there was another one that said a uh, illness, and another one said a serious illness. Which geez. oh, let's just I, yeah, I, so you know what it is. He had an illness. It was an illness mm. of some sort. Some sort. Yeah, I think he was sick. Yeah, I think he was sick too. But I liked how one of them, the one of the sites, it was a serious illness. Well, it was serious su- because it killed him. He suffered from a terminal disability. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yeah, his heart stopped. Uh, now Disney has banned selfie sticks. Good. Yeah. yeah, I don't. Know. I think they should be banned everywhere. The Vatican also banned them, and so did uh, Buckingham Palace. And that- you can't bring them. You can't use them at work. I won't let you. But it's, what are people just poking everyone <laughs> yeah. with them or something? Yeah, it's a bloody. Yeah. It's a bloody danger. Oh, come here and everyone take a selfie. Well, I'm trying to. Yeah. You know. Well, you think you've got a you've got a six foot stick that's you know you're waving around trying to get the perfect picture. <laughs> so you're doing Don't it. Worry about anyone behind you. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, so visitors will be asked. This is at Disney World or Disneyland. Will be asked to leave their sticks in lockers at the park's entrance to collect later. So there's a number of football clubs. Uh, this is all England uh, sort of centric. The National Gallery. All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club at Wimbledon. They've banned the selfie sticks. A- Apple banned the device from audiences attending its annual WWDC. Yep. And a spokesman, this is how serious these selfie sticks are. Oh, geez, they're bad news. A spokesman for St. John's Ambulance said the first aid charity had not, had noticed, had not noticed a surge in selfie stick-related injuries, but did offer advice for anybody hurt. If you get hit in the head with a selfie stick, sit down. Hold a cold compress against the injury. <laughs> Advise the casualty to seek medical help if you develop signs of worsening head injury like dizziness or nausea. Bad selfie stick. Bad selfie <laughs> stick. Uh, confusion or loss of memory of events preceding what? the injury. What the? What the <laughs> they using a hockey stick. In Sounds there. like taking antidepressant pills may have side effects. <laughs> oh, I reckon. How good. How yeah, those selfie sticks, they're no good, are they? Jeez. All right. Now, um, Eric, did you have any more stories? I think you had another one, one snuck in down there. Or was that continuing from the Johnny Ives one? What's the last one? I've Universal got. release, no, the full-length oh, the trailer. The full trailer for Steve Jobs. I had a look at the trailer. It looks pretty good. Right. Um, not so sure about the, um, the choice of Steve Jobs being played by Michael Fassbender. Oh. Who's Irish slash German. So you can... You can. I listened to the trailer, and he, obviously they've, he's been doing, you know, voice training and accent training. But every now and again, it slips out. Right, the Irish. And so, and so yeah, does the, the accent. Irish. <laughs> yeah. I invented yeah. the iPhone. It, to be sure he, to anyone would think he was sure. watching Free Willy, but never mind. <laughs> um, 
But they've got a few That's in there. That's where they got the name for the iMac. <laughs> Jeff, da- Jeff, Jeff Daniels plays John Scully, the guy that sacked him. Plays right. that. It, looks pretty, it looks all right. So, so why do we need another one? Because this was the original one. This is the one based on the book. Right, right. It's the official by, one. By uh, Ike's, the Isaacson book. Oh, okay, okay, right. And, well, uh, and the other one, just they came and, oh, we've got to jump on this, we'll strike while the iron's hot. Who can we have? Oh, we'll get that Kucha bloke. He looks a bit like him. I, I have one, a question. This um, one just goes up to the invention, uh, the release of the iPhone. It doesn't do iPad or any of the other stuff. Yeah, what, okay. What museum did they raid to find 5,000 Mac classics? Oh, probably the, just the back room at Apple. <laughs> yeah, that's probably from the government's unemployment offices or something. Oh, that's right. This, what's his name? <laughs> Plays, um, uh, what's his name? What's his name? What's his name? What's a guy that plays Steve Wozniak? Can't remember his name now. But I, I, can't, very good. I can't play the whole trailer, Will, otherwise I'll get a takedown. <laughs> so. <laughs> Seriously? There's yeah. no audio. I can't, it's it doesn't it. matter. They still take you down. Really? Yeah, audio or not. Well, that's how, do the, how do all the review sites do it then? Well, well you, you got to find it. They've probably been um, registered as review sites. No, you got to... They don't you, even do it. All they do is play a trailer. They don't even bother to yeah, you gotta, talk over half of them. You get, you get flagged as a... You get flagged for takedown and you've got to log in. You've got to go, right, yes. And, and you've got to say why you're using it. And you go, yeah, fair use. I mean, and then you type a spiel about your your reviewing it, and, and blah, then blah, somebody blah. in Australia will flag it as uh, inappropriate <laughs> content. And the, the government will block you. Well, this you, is on a right. this is on a website. This is on a YouTube page called Fred's Videos. Yeah, so that's clearly a high quality. He can have it there, but he just can't <laughs> make any money from it. He won't oh, no, it's monetized. It. But did you hear that about that lady? It's monetized and it's got one and a half million views. We'll go straight to them. I'm pretty. I don't think we said this story in the last couple of weeks. If we had, just tell me and we'll move on. But th- th- hear about the lady. She cops some abuse on Facebook, calling her, you know, some filthy names and all this sort of stuff. So anyway, so she copied what was said to her and she reposted. Yeah, yeah, she reposted it and said, "Look what these people do to me on Facebook. Look what the people say to me. This is wrong." And she, she got banned. She reposted it and got banned. Facebook banned her for using foul language. But the other people that actually directed that language at her and posted on Facebook, they didn't get banned. Somebody would have flagged that as reported to Facebook for them to even want to have a look at some random person's account. So somebody who's on her friends list or if she doesn't have a private account must have clicked on flag this as inappropriate to Facebook and then they would in, <laughs> they would review it. Otherwise, mm. they wouldn't care. I had one like that when I, a while ago, I had put a, a picture up of a motorbike who decided to park behind me and I ran over it. Um, <laughs> I remember but, that. Yeah, but I had a picture of the motorbike and the rider and the number plate of the bike and stuff. And also had my number plate in there. So it wasn't, you know, unfair use or anything. So they flagged it as inappropriate. So I went, fine. So I put it back up and I put a note under it with tags saying, this is not this person's name. This is not from this address. With This is not their phone number. This is not the registration of the bike. And it's still up there. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy how it well, all works. I, I wasn't doing anything the first time, but I thought, you want to play this game? Fine, let's play. Mm. <laughs> um, did you have any more, Will? Yeah, one more. Um, I don't know if you guys remember a while ago I was talking about Yammer, which yeah. is effectively a private uh, Facebook, I guess you can call it. Twitter. No, no, it's more like Facebook. It's a private Private um, in, internal messaging and databasing and note keeping and file store sharing sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so Did you say like Yammer. Facebook. Yammer. Yeah. Yammer. That's owned by Microsoft. It is. It now. is now. It yeah. wasn't when yeah. it started, but um, of course, since Microsoft owned it, there's a few things happen. Like it's, it's gone to the toilet. Yeah. 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 I mean, for what we're using it for at work, it's still it's still quite good. Um, we use it at work for sharing files and and doing um, instant messaging with the driver on the road and sending map locations and stuff like that. So it's fine for what we use it for. But um, it's just surprising that it, they've, yeah, they've had it since, they've had it for three years. Um, and Microsoft hasn't really touched Yammer per se. They haven't really done much with it. But a lot of the stuff that's happening in Office 365 and a lot of the uh, more recent sort of, um, uh, what do you call it? Like, I guess, Cloud. networking or cloud-based sort of communication and the way they're doing a lot of it actually came from the Yammer technology. 
Mm. Um, well, so that... unfortunately, they've let Yammer go to crap, but yeah, it, it has been beneficial for them. Um, well, I like I, I liked Yammer before Microsoft bought it, and the reason I say that is when they bought it, like you used to be able to download the app, or like the the software onto your computer, and it was just like yep. a little little software you know a little program that opened up yeah. and then you got a message it'd pop up and blah 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 and then they said nah we don't want that they got rid of that and then it was all web-based so it was in a browser and and the same as i don't know if you know tweet deck you can't download oh, yeah. a desktop version of it well you can but it's crap it's not that's, built. that's owned by twitter yeah but you can't download a desktop version made say for windows 8.1 and but the thing is, Yammer is the same. Like, even if you use it on the browser, because we've got an iPad at work now because the boss has insisted on using Zero and Ven, and Ven's useless, but anyway. Mm. Um, but um, so we've got an iPad to do that on the road, and we thought, oh, I'll put the Yammer app on it. Well, the Yammer app, it doesn't have threading. It doesn't keep conversations. It doesn't let you access the files. The app basically does nothing. All it is a notification to let you know to log into the web page to... <laughs> Yeah, yeah well, that's right. Rusty. It's rubbish now. That's why. I, that's why I got rid of it. The, the, if you use it from the web page, it's fine. Yes. But yeah, the apps. Yes. The apps are the apps are useless in it. Yeah, it's, it's rubbish. That's a nice skill of um, wheel there. It is, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I think you, you need to get some bandwidth there, Will. You've lost it all. Um, Scott's doing about zero point zero one frames a second now. Now, while Will's looking for bandwidth, and I'm sure you'll find some under the blanket somewhere. Uh, Jace, did you have any more this week? I got one that's um, tragic, but also uh, has a funny side to it. If you can imagine that, when Good a Financial time. Times employment correspondent shared a story on Twitter about a killer robot, she had no idea what was going to happen next. Sarah O'Connor had shared the Financial <laughs> Times story regarding no, no. twenty-one-year-old who was killed by a robot while completing contract work at a Volkswagen plant in Germany. Oh. <laughs> on Twitter, Sarah O'Connor, yeah. oh. a robot has killed a worker in a VW plant in Germany. While tweeting with the best of intentions, yep. Ms. O'Connor soon, loon, soon learned that it's best to avoid sharing stories on social media about killer robots, especially when your name is eerily close to the protagonist of Terminator, Sarah Connor. <laughs> Immediately following the tweet, Ms. O'Connor was bombarded with tweets referencing the Terminator franchise. <laughs> uh, one guy says, you are only hope now. Resistance fully supports you as our leader. Take care of John Connor. He's our only hope. Skynet is close. Run, Sarah, run. She must have as been wondering what the hell was going on. As the tweets went on, it became apparent Miss O'Connor was becoming frustrated. She even advised people not to follow her. In the end, she reminded people someone had died and their behavior was inappropriate. You mm. know what? She probably has a point. Yes. She says, I've never even watched the films. Now my feed is full of people tweeting me about Skynet. <laughs> Feeling really uncomfortable about this inadvertent Twitter thing I seem to have kicked off. Somebody has died. Let's not forget. But, yeah, so that is, that is sad because uh, if you don't know, uh, what she was tweeting about, was, I think it was a V-dub factory, manufacturing factory over wherever they manufacture them, Germany, wherever. And, you know, how, how you got the, the body of the car goes through the bay and you've got all these robots, come, arms coming down like this and putting in screws and putting in steering wheels and all this sort of stuff. Well, apparently yeah. one of those arms picked up someone. And it was in a safety cage and everything and yeah. it was supposed to be disabled, but it still got him. Yeah, and apparently just tried to make him part of the car or something. So, yeah, so that's no good for that guy. But, um, but yeah, look, I can see that's, that's funny in a dark way, in a dark sort of way. So, um, yeah. Uh, all right, well, did you have any more, Jace, while you were there? Because Will's still, Will's, you're circling. I got, what? Bar yes, and or we haven't got an image from you at the moment. <laughs> Will's got the Skype it's, circle. Skype is bore something fierce. Oh, the little circle. Well, we'll go on uh, while that like, while that's working itself out. We'll come back, Will, if, and even if it's just audio for you, so don't despair. Oh, there he is. You're back, Will. Are you good? We got our Willie. Oh, he's finally. A, he's a finally. steal. But anyway. Oh. Mm. Well, there was a short one that I had. Um, support ends for Windows Server 2003 on July 14. Oh, very. And um, a lot of companies are still using it. July 14, 2015, Microsoft will officially end its extended support for Windows Server 2003. What this means is the company will stop providing patches to fix security vulnerabilities or newly discovered defects in the code, much like Windows XP when it's extended 
Oh, support ran out in April last year. What's different though is that while those upgrading from Windows XP had to deal with application migration challenges, migrating from a Windows Server 2003 is typically a much longer planned and complex process, which begs the question that many CIOs and data center managers are asking themselves, why the urgency to migrate from Windows Server 2003 if the current servers work just fine? Why incur the extra cost, spend precious man hours and risk possible downtime to upgrade something that serves the organization mm. well. Mm. But they're going to have Good to because uh, they'll be vulnerable. Money. So, Eric, what are you doing? Because you got Server 2003. <laughs> I'm getting rid of it this week or next week. Because of this? Uh, partly. Partly because I've had it since 2003. Um, no, 2008. <laughs> right. Why did you get 2008 on there? Oh, maybe it's 2007 I've got. I don't uh, know. Yeah. Anyway, it's going. Yeah, right. I've, well, the server that I, I had at the office has been there since 2008. Right. It's now 2015. So mathematics, seven mm. years, nearly eight. Mm. It's got to go. And as part of that going, uh, it's getting the new Windows Server 2000 and whatever the latest one is. 12R. 12. 12. 13. Which is not actually. all that's new either. <laughs> It's so, have you ever had to replace hard drives in the in your server? No, I've had to. Um, I've had to add to them, though. I have never had to replace them. Geez, that's all right. Seven years. Speaking, or so. of, speaking of your stuff, I saw that um, Etax is going away now, and they're switching over to my tax. Yeah, it doesn't worry. It doesn't bother me. Is that like no. do yourself taxes? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. And you have to sign in with your MyGov login. Oh, that's rubbish! That thing. It's going to be cross, going to be cross platform, which is good because Mac hasn't had a e-tax application for years. Mm. You know those the questions. I'm so sick of all these questions. You know, like oh, especially say like, even with the tax. Office, what are, what are people going to find out about you by logging into the tax office as you? Like I don't know. They can't take any money. And I just put in like they you got all those secret questions. What you know, blah blah blah. Three secret questions. Who can be bothered? I, I just write down, my secret questions are, what's the first letter of the alphabet? What's the second letter of the alphabet? <laughs> and what's the third letter of the alphabet? So I can just go A, B, C. And that's The easiest done. thing to do is just have the same question, the same answer, no matter what the question is. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah, But I can just go C, A, B, or C. What town were you born in? A? A? What's your favourite dog's name? B? What's your <laughs> child's middle name? C? That's right. That's all you have to do. All right. Uh, look, I've got another one. Will, did you have any more this week? Oh, William, he's gone for good. Hey, seriously? No, nah, you're back. Fi- you got any more? Do, I have, do, I have a, do I have a picture back or not? Well, you got a still. You got a still frame, it's nice. Man, we can well, work. how am I supposed to show you a video with a still frame? It doesn't quite work, does like, it? It, give, it gives you some real um, dopey eyes. <laughs> no, no, that, no that, that's actually real. That's, that's not, normal. That's, yeah. Right. No, I, I put those. I, I have those. That's just... Stone. No, I was going to show you a, a video. But it's a bit I guess like Glenn's no, usual Skype picture. Mine's yeah. all right, isn't it? Am Just I all right? Oh, <laughs> you're regenerating. What's, <laughs> <laughs> He's going like this. What's going on? I, don't know. I wish I could see what you guys could see. <laughs> there we go. Yes. The show and they're what are you doing? Inside the cap your speed. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Can we? Can we? Can you? Can we still hear Will? Are, we, are you still able to audio us? No, no. It, it was a whole thing how about technology can uh, can make a, a, a simple thing incredibly complicated, and there's no real no need for it. Right. Well, <clears> but uh, that's what... talking about Microsoft products again. <laughs> yes. Well, I've got one last story. Jay, did you have any more? That's it. All right. Well, let's do my last story, and we'll get out of here. Uh, my last one. And now, look, you guys. I'll put this up on the screen. Oh, you don't you don't see the screen, do you? Nope. Nope. Because you can't figure out how to do two cameras at once, apparently. No. Oh, well. Well, I was going to... Computers put a... are hard for us computer <laughs> technicians. <laughs> well, I don't know why I can't do the camera to Skype. I don't know. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I hear there's these good blokes called Aussie Tech Heads who will come help you with yeah, your send computer. send them an problems. email. They might be able to tell you what's going on. <laughs> now, I don't know if you the guys are watching. The, are you watching the stream as we go or no? Just watching me? Okay. Well, anyway. Uh, the com- well, you're watching the stream, but it's like 30 seconds behind. Right. Well, there'll be a picture coming on soon. I was going to, if we're all up to speed, I was going to ask you to oh, there it is. identify that machine and see if you can. Well, I wouldn't be Just, able to. So. Uh, well, I could know. Because I, I think close. you mentioned it on the Old Fart Geeks last week. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, uh, he knows it's one of the ad. I can't remember what it is. 
It is. Do you want me, is Warlock? I have the red, red keys. I'm not the in the lounge yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. are, you, are you logging in? Yeah. Okay, well, what I can tell you about this is that the National Museum of Computing needs help to maintain the stock of unknown machines at the moment because um, the, be, uh, maintain the stock of these machines it uses in education programs and exhibits. It is looking for people familiar with the computer and its peripherals, including monitors and disk drives. Now, this machine was launched in 1981 and gave many people their first taste of home computing. I can't believe these are still in a production environment. <laughs> but, um, it's like what? BBC Micro. Oh, bingo. <laughs> they are, the BBC Micro. You can tell Micro. with the red buttons. Yeah, I knew what it was, but I couldn't think of the name. I'm already talking about it a week, like a few days ago, too. Yeah, the BBC Micro. That's the one. Uh, the, yeah, the National Museum of Computing. They need help. If you know how to fix a BBC Micro, that more importantly, you have the parts, you would, you'd get a pretty good gig at the... Uh, the TNMOC, National Museum of Computing. If it has a cartridge, you just pull it out, bash it on the table, blow on the contacts a bit and shove it back in again. Can't you, with those contacts, don't you, isn't it the old secret you put a, a racer over them? Racer, uh, yeah. 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 Mm. Same as a Nintendo, they're all the same. Yeah, okay, cool. Oh, look, I did when, have... I, when, I was, when I was actually working as computer tech in Melbourne, we actually had uh, a brace strip that was actually designed to go in the slot that was actually the right width. It was basically like a uh, uh, kind of like a really dense version of Velcro. And it went in between the like PCI, in your PCI card and stuff like that. It went in where the slots were. And mm. you could actually clean out the slots and you could run it over the run it over the heads of the, the cartridges and stuff. Oh yeah, that's the go. Look, I've just found a couple of quick stories and just uh, this particular one, just a reaction of when I read it. The Apple has removed games featuring the Confederate flag from the App Store. So Apple yeah. has yeah, become the latest retailer to remove products featuring the Confederate flag after pulling a number of games from the App Store. Uh, now, we've got here... Because only America thinks they're going to erase history. You're not allowed yeah. to... They, they stopped on um, public TV in the US and cable... Uh, yeah, with the a hazard. Jigsaw Hazard. No way. Yep. Yeah, can't watch the Jigsaw Hazard. That's ridiculous. This is going too far. Now, look, whether we like it or not, and, you know, th those guys from the deep south, are, they can be rednecky and they should be, you know, put in their place. But like Warlock said, you can't erase history. No. no it it yeah. happened. And, I yeah. mean, it's like, it's like you're, ne you're never going to be able to watch Huck Finn again either for the same reason. I can't Let's, believe you that. You know what else we can erase? I Let's can't erase the it. fact that Captain Cook arrived here and had scones and tea with the Aboriginals. Let's just add uh, that in there and, get rid, of the, and get, rid of, get rid of the reality mm. is where they actually murdered quite a few of them. Some people are trying to make a race that for a while. Yeah, well, uh, just I can't like, believe that about the Dukes. That's disgraceful. Uh, it's just stupid. It's, mm. uh, there's political correctness and there's just bullshit, and this is just bullshit. But my, yeah. but my, my uh, thought when I read this was like, and so uh, going along with, back to this story, Amazon, Walmart and Sears have all stopped selling the Confederate flag. Uh, critics they have to. Critics. They don't have a choice. eBay you, can't you, do it either. You, yeah, you're okay. not allowed to. You're not even allowed to own one, let alone display one. If you own a Confederate flag, you will be jailed. Wow. What about if it, you it, know, here, the, the Eureka flag in Australia is some considered racist by some, but the people yeah. still buy that. Yeah, That's it's terrible. Just, but I thought they had free speech in the states. Apparently, they don't. No, but well, my thing is like, why are they why are they banning a flag? Why don't they just get rid of the gun? And so they well, they got to have yeah, home. The, That's the thing. Got, Someone said that actually. Everyone's the NRA is stronger. We're getting rid of the flag, whereas they've got bigger problems. If that's if that's, I think you've got bigger problems mm. than the flag. If you get rid of the gun, then yeah. you can have any flag you want. Yeah, and the NRA be no, no shooting. The flag lobby. No, it doesn't work. Doesn't work like that. That's rubbish. <laughs> that's rubbish. It is. But, it's absolute rubbish. You've got to get rid of the flag so that you've got room to put the gay pride flag up. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's wrong. And you can, and for every flag you buy, you can have ten guns. Mm. Yeah, you know I'm all for is, that. This is the gun lobby, or the right wing nut jobs. It's the way their way of distracting what the real problem is. No, it's not. I don't have a problem with every person owning a gun. If every person owns a gun, there will be no shootings. Nobody's going to rob a bank. Nobody is going to have a mass. Oh, I don't gun. believe that at all. That's it's what true. they the statistic, said. No, statistically, there are 30, murders a year in the United States. That's right, and there's a, and only about one percent of the population have firearms. No, that's rubbish. It's, it's absolutely not. Rubbish. 
it's a lot higher. Statistically, than that. That you look at somewhere like Sweden where everybody owns a firearm almost. There are virtually no instances of, of gun. Yeah, but they, but, they don't, or... but they don't have the redneck attitude. It's got nothing to no, do with No, they have respect. No, they have been taught they respect. They, they have respect for people and they have respect for their firearm. But they're not. That's what it comes down to. It's not. Yeah, well, that comes down to attitude, and Americans, a lot of them, are rednecks. Yeah, and you but, can't change that by giving everyone a gun. No, well, you can eliminate it's the problem cultural. by giving everyone a gun. They'll get rid no, of you them. can't, because it's cultural. You, Sweden and, and Israel and Switzerland have all got... Um, everyone over the age of 18 can dismantle a... Um, in That's Israel, right. can dismantle a handgun and That's put right. one back together and shoot one dead straight. Ukraine. But they're not rednecks. Mm. No, but that's that's what I'm saying. It's cultural. The that's Swiss are the same. You can't ban guns because then the people who you don't want to have guns will be the ones who have them. You need to change yeah. attitudes and change policies. But it's worked all right over yeah. here. It works. No, it well, it could be better, but it. it um, the only, you, the only people I, who have guns in Australia are the ones who we don't want to have them. The criminals, the bikies, if you want to classify them as criminals, because they are apparently. Well, that um, may be or, true, but in America, the same thing goes. You've got the criminals and right. the bikies, and it's got one. Plus, you've got the crazies, who, yeah. you know, the but ones that, the lone, the, the lone wolf who goes in and shoots the place up. But they're going to have them regardless of the laws anyway, so why not educate, train, and, and teach people how to do it and protect no. themselves? Yeah, I don't know. It's a generational I, thing. It will, take, it will take multiple generations for it to work. But it'll you take can't hundreds just, of years. You can't what they should have, you what they actually them. should do, if they're going, if they say, if that everyone is allowed to have a gun, what they should do is um, lift the criteria and the reasons why you have one, and yeah. put stiff penalties. Look, jail time, not a right. you know, thousand buck fine. Get pulled over and you've got a concealed weapon in the glove box. You know, like stiff jail penalties, and maybe then they'll start respecting the gun, like we'll suggest. And not everybody has guns. You still have to have your license. You still have to have your training. But what it yeah, does it's is still it easy to get one, mate. It's still very easy to get one. But it's still know, easy mate. to get one for anyone. If uh, uh, I, I can pick up within five minutes of here, I know where there's half a dozen different weapons I can go and purchase. Look, yeah, it's not hard to get a firearm now. The cops will be knocking on your door in a second. Now. <laughs> they're quite welcome to. I can show them where they're uh, going. Welcome to Firearm Weekly. Years. There was a <laughs> look. There's a good comedy thing on Facebook, one doing the rounds of some guy stand up comedy he's talking about guns in the Jim US. Jeffries. Is that it? Yeah, it's is yeah. he Australian? The Australian dude? Yes. Yeah. It's very, very funny. And I think he he makes his point. I don't know. You can watch it on Netflix. Oh, can you? What this whole show? Because uh people have been putting in now that that's become really popular, people have been putting in requests to YouTube to have his comedy video about how stupid America is with guns pulled off. And then he gets it put back on again. They pull it off and get put back on. So he said, I follow him on Facebook. He said, look, just go and watch my show on Netflix. You can watch the whole thing there. It's great. Who's taken him off? People who just report it for whatever reason. They might say that it's stolen content or somebody else's content or inappropriate or something oh, like this. But Netflix, yes. uh, YouTube pulls everything down as soon as you report it. He has to go in there and say, this is mine. Please put it back. And eventually they review it, put it back again, and somebody else reports it and gets pulled straight down again. <laughs> That's rubbish. Same thing happens with Leo Laporte. He's given up on trying to do it. He's got friends and people who work for him who have family members who work for Google and YouTube. And as he puts up stuff and somebody will report it. It gets taken down. He said there's this random guy who owns a Brazilian TV station who keeps on reporting um, Leo Laporte's videos on YouTube as stolen from his show so YouTube take it down immediately and it takes them weeks to get it back up again so he just says I give up now mm. we spend all of our time just requesting it to get back wouldn't you think that, that Google or YouTube would come up with some sort of rating system of people that just keep <clears> abusing <throat> the takedown and go look this guy in Brazil like well, okay he's been doing this for a year every episode Leo puts up I think this guy's a bit of a nutbag Let's just uh, so automate it. No. So as soon as he does yep. it, they pull it off, and then you have to. Because I had it. that with every Android show. That's one of the reasons I stopped doing the Android podcast. Because every episode that went up got pulled down by some. I can't think of the name off the top of my head. But what they are is there a uh, a music um, protector, and it's their job to make sure that you don't use uh, someone's music without their permission. Right. So I filed a complaint against them and had all their videos pulled off YouTube. 
Oh, nice. Revenge <laughs> is sweet. Once I, once I found out who it was, I went, fine. You can obviously, you've got plenty of time on your hands here. Do something <laughs> yes. for a while. So well, I reported all 650 of their videos, and they all got pulled down by the end of the day. All right, well, I've got a real quick one here to finish up with, and then we are definitely getting out of here. The, remember, Google's been... Um, uh, removing links at requests of its users if they, if you're you know you, you've been bagged in a newspaper and you don't want it to be Google search you can apply to Google get that link for that article taken off the search well the BBC has set a precedent for other organizations by publishing a list of those links that it has been asked to be removed the links were removed as part of the right to be forgotten ruling that's been put in place by the european court it allowed individuals to request certain links and not show up when the person searches their name it was up to the individual media organizations to decide how best to be transparent with these blah 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 now there's a link in the show notes aussietechs.com.au forward slash podcast go to the show notes and you, there's a, a link that you'll see where the the list of the BBC links that have been removed. And you know that you're going to be reading something good when you click on them because each, every one of them is, you know, someone, some deadbeat out there being, getting reported on by, for, you know, killing cats or something, just the deadbeats. And, uh, yeah, it's, look, it's, it's interesting. So go and have a look at that if you're interested. All right, let's uh, wrap it up. Uh, so don't, don't forget the Obsidian Loft and uh, the Old Fart Geeks on the iTunes and wherever yeah, else. Yeah, I got a um, message from someone to the Old Fart Geeks uh, Twitter saying, listening to my new favourite show, Old Fart Geeks, great to have some Aussie accents. Nice work. So uh, he probably won't well, hear... that guy I paid, I should have told you. He, was he probably won't that. hear that shout out because it's the wrong show. <laughs> yeah, he only but... watches how I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but anyway, maybe, maybe he, can, he comes across the Aussie Tech Ed. So if you have, if you well, are... Or maybe if you did some cross promotion on your show, we he'd do. be watching it. We do. We, we cross promote well, all the shows on all the shows. Well, <laughs> maybe, maybe he does. So hello, you. Now, oh, how's that? I left that right. in. That must be telling us we got to get going. Yeah, so, I left what in? Oh, I left the, the end music in. That's not supposed to play, but it's playing, so we better get going. Okay, so that's it for us. Uh, don't forget, yeah, the Facebook, the uh, the webpage, the AussieTechRadio.com. Thanks, Eric. Thanks for coming in. You're welcome. Thanks, uh, thank you, thank you, Will, on your on your phone that you don't pay for. <laughs> See you, uh, you will get done one day. You'll get a bill for a lot of money. Uh, oh, it's going to be hilarious. Get better trying to fare like everyone else. That's yep. right. What do you mean I it's use 200,000 gig in a month? That's not even possible. <laughs> and uh, thanks, Warlock. <laughs> thanks for coming in. Thanks. That no. works. All right. Good Just luck with your new time. job when you start. And uh, don't forget the... Uh, Monday and I'll be able to come on the show a lot more because it's only 8.30 to 5. And no weekends, no night shift, no evening shifts, none of that rubbish and more. Cool. So, you see, the, the problem with the live the live exit is I've got to pat it out till it gets louder. So, don't, and the state of origin. <laughs> so, go the blues. We'll see you all uh, next episode. Be Bye. good. Bye-bye. <laughs>